Charisse, you mentioned earlier that uh, the core job of NBDB really is to help the publishing industry, right? It's, we're supposed to promote reading, but of course we can't do that without the industry's help, right? So what have we been doing? You mentioned that the pandemic, of course, uh, was a major factor in the global economy, but let's, let's begin with how are, how are the publishers right now and how is NBDB trying to help them get back on, on their feet? Okay. So during the last year, well, obviously in the onset of the pandemic, it was very difficult because the publishers in the Philippines, they do rely on the physical stores. They do rely on, um, on the schools and universities open so they can distribute their books. But that wasn't the case. So many publishers actually closed shop. Mm. And it was quite difficult. But then something happened, the rise of this e-commerce. Okay. So many publishers shifted, you know, about a year into COVID, they shifted um, to this digital space and they mm -hmm. started distributing digitally, whether it be placing their books in a digital format right. or selling and distributing their books through these e-commerce websites. Like Lazada and Shopee, I, I noticed that they, that was quite a, an initiative from the publishers themselves. Yes, so they, they shifted to that. And last year, what NBDB did is we began having a, just, you know, wonderful conversations with them and working closely with them to provide more subsidies and grants so that they could produce more. Right. And what we did is we connected it with the customer. So the customer was able to purchase books at a better price. Right. So we would subsidize the publishers with their, with, their, with their books, their discounts, and the customers would get that offset, um, that, that huge discount. So we started doing that last year. Um, and actually last year we've had the highest number of ISBNs in the history of the Philippines. So people started to create. So COVID was devastating. Yes, many had shuttered down, but then, you know, you have this uptick. So from 2020, we had about 6,500 international standard book numbers. So these are new titles right. in the Philippines. It was the lowest ever. Right. And then an uptick, you see 2021, about 9,500, mm. which means people were producing more. Yeah. And not necessarily the publishers, the huge publishers that you see, you also saw the rise of the self-published authors. Yes, and the smaller um, smaller organizations really stepping up to the challenge. Yeah. Well, I wonder also if the rise in the ISBN, that's the international standard book number, right, for each title that's published, um, whether or not that increased really because of some of the initiatives that MBDB did to really streamline the process, right? But how did the publishers react to Booknook? Was it, I know that we were, we could only do so much, right? 50 yes. something uh, Booknook uh, sites in yeah. 2021, um, and you have 40 or so proposed for this year. 40 this year. Um, is it something that, that helps them or is it just a drop in the bucket? It, for, it helps okay. many of the of the smaller publishers. Okay. So I had one publisher come up to me and said, "You saved us. We were closing, right? And because of the book nook, we were able to sell the copies that we needed to do so we could move, right, for 2022, right? Um, and because you know our budget is to be able, we are part of the creative industry right. under UNCTAD, right. under the creative industry's law. So we really need to be able to have the budget so that we can care for our private publishers. Right. So another thing that we're doing this year that we've started is the Book Institute of the Philippines. Right. And this is to professional, it's a, it's a, it's a, School and educational workshops and whatnot. Hopefully, we can be part of this um, larger system. But what we do is we train individuals on how to publish and right. how to publish well. Right. And in the Philippines, there is no such course. So if you would like quality, if you expect quality, you need to be able to train everyone on what quality is like. 
For example, the paper quality, most don't know, they will just print. How about the book design? Mm -hmm. Book design is very integral. Right. People do judge a book by its cover. Sure. And uh, the copy editing, I've seen books where the editing is not up to par. So right. We're and so, really of course, those are the interventions that NBDB is trying to, yes. to do, right? Yes. All education, professionalizing. Right. W would you say that, you know, would it be fair to say that maybe if, um, if um, that can be supported more, that that can perhaps address the quality, not only of what we call trade books in the Philippines, but yeah. also textbooks? Yes. Of course, definitely, because again, we don't have any, we don't have any um, standard system. So if we set the standards that people can follow, that agencies can follow, government agencies, private organizations can follow, then of course it will, right. it will, the quality will be of international. Right, standard. but of course the most important thing is that people have to buy more Philippine books. Philippine books. Right, and an important institutional buyer, of course, is our mother agency, the Department of Education. Yes. And we've been doing a lot of consultations, hearings, and other meetings with them. Could you talk about that, how we're helping, or how NBDB is helping okay. the publishers um, uh, coordinate okay. with the Department of Education? The, the last year we've had um, a very, well, we started to have a very strong relationship with the Department of Education. Thank you, <laughs> Chick Link. Um, so with that, we are invited to all of the meetings and we provide consultation to the Department of Education specifically for projects like the supplementary learning resources. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Education, they actually have, um, have a list of books that to provide to libraries and to DEP at affiliated institutions and from this list that's where that's the books that you can purchase once when we disaggregated it because we do have a research component the National Book Development Board has a research unit when we disaggregated the books we noticed that many of the books were 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 foreign or which is fine but we had a discussion with the Department of Education and we and we noted that we do have books right. of quality. So it's really just connecting the right. Department of Education or any institution of that right. matter to the publishers, right. right? Because originally the publishers, they, some of them don't have a website. So how are you supposed to procure if they don't have websites? So another program that we have that it will really democratize that knowledge and help not only the Department of Education procure, but CHED um, and all of the public and private schools is the right. National Book Database. Right. So the National Book Database is really a one-stop shop. If you are looking for a Filipino book, a mm -hmm. Filipino authored book, let's say um, from 1971, you are looking for a graphic novel by Amranao mm -hmm. or an Iranun female, mm -hmm. then you can find it. So it's, it's kind of like Amazon mm -hmm. um, and a bibliographic database rolled into one. Right. You can't necessarily purchase the book, but you will have all of the information, right. including reviews, where to borrow, right. which library it's in, and right. where to purchase the books. Right. So this will democratize that, that information so that everyone is aware of the books that the Philippines has to offer. Well, hopefully this, this will also um, bring um, information to people who might want to order reprints, Yes. right, uh, for some titles. Uh, there are certainly a lot of interesting books that are difficult to find, and as you said, this will be a one-stop shop. Um, is this possible this year? What, what, did, um, what, what did the Congress give uh, NVDB? Is it, uh, is it something we can afford this year, or we have to wait? We, we would have to wait for next year. Okay. <laughs> we have to wait for next year, and the budget season is coming up, and we do okay. hope to, to have m more insertions so that we can really take care of the industry and not only the industry, but to make sure our children are reading. Right, right. And, and one of the things that um, I, I remember, an anecdote that you told me, was that you were, I think, uh, at one of the book nook sites, and then some child came up to you, was asking for, I guess, her indigenous story. And you were quite sad that, you know, we didn't have, have it yet. But, you know, it's a chicken and egg thing. We have to 
buy more books now so that our publishers can produce even more books. Can produce because right? you have to think publishing is a very it's a business. So if there was only 10 people that will order one book, they won't produce Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But if you look at all of our ethno-linguistic groups, there are, you know, how many Mrenao speakers alone, how many um, different Aita communities. And this child, when I went to the book nook, it was Aita, an Aita community in Bataan. I believe it was Magbukon. They spoke Magbukon, which is one of the Aita languages, and it's actually already threatened. Okay. Meaning it's, it's about to disappear. It's about to disappear. The, the child and the mother, I, I was so excited to give all these Filipino books for children, and she looked at the books and there is no book that represented her. Right. You know, this dark brown, beautiful skin with curly hair, right. nothing. And she said, where's my book? And I cried. I right. could not offer her that. So so now we're having publishers um, uh, try to look at these communities and start creating books for them. And we would can also um, place it in the book nooks in those areas. So there right. would be purchase for it. Right, so it, it's important to tell people to buy our own books. Yes. We're not discriminating against foreign books, right? Yes. But you know, we want to also encourage people to look at our own. Would you say that that's a correct uh, yes. policy approach that we're? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, if we're a colonized country, and it's, this is something that we have to face head on, if you look at our music, our media, our food, whose voice do you give primacy to? Right. Right? When you go to a buffet, the Filipino food will always be at the end, right? Right. Everything right. is front and center, which is fine because we're trying to be global, right. but why don't we give more primacy to our own voice? Right. If you go to the bookstore, it's the same thing. So children grow up not valuing their own. Children grow up wanting to leave right. because they don't see the value. Right. Have you even seen, how many children's books do you see about the Pasig River right. and taking care of the Pasig River. I, I can't think of one. How many the, books? Do I'm you sure see? there are, but you know they're not accessible. Not accessible. Yeah. How many books do you see about our animals? Right. Right. About our very cool snakes. Where I live alone in Montelupa, there's about 60 different types of snakes. Okay. But yet, children don't have that knowledge, and that's something that it would be sad if we do not provide that to our children. Our publishers are able to do it, right. but we do need the funding. And I, <laughs> I know, that's, 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 always the, that's always the issue. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, and I, I've said this before, and I don't know if you agree, or you're just being polite to me, <laughs> but our, our, Philip, our, our own stories can, can, can make it uh, in the global market. You know, we uh, promoted Trese, you might want to talk about that dress has now been adapted to a series on Netflix. Yes. So, so what's interesting in the Philippines is books are always thought of as a social good, which is great. But many don't realize that books are also a unique knowledge product, mm. meaning there is economic power in the book and the contents within the book and the iterations of the contents from that book. For example, Trese. Right. Um, for example, Smaller and Smaller Circles. There are so many other books as well now that are being translated. And I think we we really need to start pushing right. um, our stories because they can be made into movies, sure. music, merchandise, theater, furniture, right. clothing. There's so many things that you can do with the contents of the book. If you look at, for example, Disney, many of their stories are from from books. You look at Aladdin right. and you know there's an Aladdin backpack and sure. Aladdin, you know, the slippers or sure. whatnot. So that's something that we can do with our books. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, as I said, you know, if we can see Crazy Rich Asians, yes. you know, beginning as a novel from Singapore, then becoming a Hollywood sensation, why not some of our own works?